Okay, so on your test, you may see a question that has a shape and it's on top of a graph and they're telling you to take that shape and rotate that shape 90 degrees clockwise about the axis. Now that can seem a little bit confusing. So what I wanna do with you guys today in the video is break this question down so that you feel more confident when you have this on one of your tests. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about and the first thing that you should do when you're given a problem like this is to label the quadrants. So what do I mean by quadrants? So when you're looking at a graph, you're gonna have an X line and a Y line, X axis, Y axis, okay? Each one of these boxes are called quadrants, okay? So I'm gonna erase that, I just want you guys to be able to see that. Quadrant because there's four. So it starts with one, and then it goes to the left two, then three, then four, okay? So there's four quadrants. It starts in the upper right corner, and then it goes counterclockwise to the left, one, two, three, and four. So that's the very first thing that I want you to do anytime you get a problem like this. Label the quadrants. Okay, now that you've labeled the quadrants, we're gonna do something else that's gonna help us in the future. And what we're gonna do is, we're just going to write the signs of the points that are, that are found in each of the quadrants, okay? So for the first one, we're gonna write plus, plus. What does that mean? It means if you have any point that's found in this first quadrant, no matter what point it is that you choose, the X value is going to be a positive number and the Y value is also going to be a positive number. So in the corner, we're gonna write positive, positive. So what about the second quadrant, okay? In the second quadrant, the X is going to be negative and the Y is going to be positive. So we're gonna write negative, positive. In the third quadrant, they're all always gonna be negative, negative. And then in the fourth quadrant, all the points are gonna be positive, negative. Okay, so I'm gonna pause right here because I don't wanna leave anybody behind. But if you're not quite sure what it is that I'm speaking of, we're just gonna take a pause and we're gonna discuss it. So what I mean by this is that any point that's found in this quadrant is going to have a positive X and Y value. So for example, that point would be at one, two, three, four, positive four, comma, one, two, three, four, positive four. So this point would be four, comma, four, and they would both be positive. Now, if we take a, po if we take a point in the second quadrant, we're gonna put a point here. Okay, so let's figure out what point that would be. It would be negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, negative eight, and then positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, it's a negative and a positive. So that's why we wrote negative and a positive. So this is very important that when you're doing, oops, sorry, I erased the whole thing. It's very important when you're doing these types of problems to put in these positive and negative signs in the corners because it's going to allow you to know that if I end up now drawing a shape in this quadrant or in this quadrant or in this quadrant, I know that the points have to be either positive, positive, or positive, comma, negative, or negative, comma, negative, or negative, comma, positive. Okay, so I know that may have seemed a little bit confusing, but I'm glad that you guys haven't given up yet because it's all gonna make sense in a moment. All right, so now let's just talk about some other things. We're going to try to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. So just as a reminder, clockwise is going to the right. So if I'm moving this clockwise, I'd be moving this triangle to the right. If I was moving something counterclockwise, I'd be moving it to the left. So this triangle would be moving this way. So if you are a little bit confused with that on your piece of paper, you can write clockwise and you can make an arrow going right and you can write counterclockwise and the arrow going to the left. Okay, 
So now we're going to talk about the amount of degrees. So anytime, because we're talking about an axis and they're all with 90 degree angles, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, if they tell us to go 90 degrees in a direction, then we're literally going from this quadrant to the next quadrant, which is a total of 90 degrees. Now, if they told us to go 180 degrees, we'd go from one quadrant to the next quadrant. So it would be a total of 90 plus 90, which is equal 180 degrees. And if they told us that we are to move this triangle 270 degrees, then we would move it to this quadrant, then to this quadrant, then to this quadrant, because it would be 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, and it would end up 270 degrees. Okay, so now that we understand that, and I'm, I'm doing more in this problem just so that you guys can fully understand. You guys can go ahead and scale on to another video, but you're not going to fully understand these problems unless we go over each one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. So now we understand what it means to go clockwise, and we also know what it means to go 90 degrees clockwise, 180 degrees clockwise, or 270 degrees clockwise. All right, so now that we have this background knowledge, we can go ahead and say, how do we move this triangle 90 degrees clockwise about the axis? Okay, so we can go ahead and let's try to figure out first, if I rotate this, this triangle is now going to be in which quadrant? Okay, so again, we're going clockwise, so that means we're going to the right. And because we're only going 90 degrees, we're only gonna go from one quadrant to the next. So now we know that our quadrant, our triangle is going to be now in quadrant one. And because we wrote what all the points in quadrant one are, we know that all of our points have to be positive x's and positive y values. That's why we wrote those positive and positive signs. So let's go ahead and see what it is that we have to do in order to go from one quadrant to the next. So the first thing you should do is identify which points are on the triangle. So this point, that is going to be one, two, three, four. So it's four, negative four, sorry, negative four, and then it goes up two. So let me just clarify that because it kind of looks, let me do it. Four, negative four, comma, two. Okay, and then let's figure out what this point is. It would be negative four and then up one, two, three, four, five. So negative four comma five. And then this one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So negative seven, and then it goes up two. So negative seven, positive two. Okay, so now that we've identified each one of our points, let's go ahead and write it down here. So we have negative four comma two as one of our points. We have negative four comma five as one of our points, and we have negative seven comma two as one of our points. Okay, perfect. So now that we have those as our points, these are our original points. So the way that we go from this quadrant to the next quadrant is we flip these around. So the first thing you do is you flip them around. So instead of four, two, we're gonna write two, four, Instead of writing four, five, we're gonna write five, four. And instead of writing seven, two, we're gonna write two comma seven. So the very first thing you do when you're moving the points from one quadrant to the next quadrant is you flip them. So we just literally just flip them around. Now that we flip them around, we look to see what they're supposed to be, whether they're supposed to be positives, whether they're supposed to be positive negatives or negatives and positives. So because it's going into this new quadrant, they're all supposed to be positives. So it's positive two, positive four, positive five, positive four, positive two, positive seven. Okay, so now that we know 
what their points are, and we know what signs they're supposed to have, we now have our new points for this new quadrant. So we're gonna go over two, one, two, and we're gonna go up four. One, two, three, four. And that's our first point. Then we're gonna go five, four. So one, two, three, four, five, up four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, perfect. And then we're gonna do two, seven. So one, two, up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now that we have our three points, we can go ahead and connect them. And this is what the triangle would look like if it was rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the axis. So again, all we did was we flipped the numbers and then we figured out what signs they should be based on the quadrant that they're in. So let's go ahead and now flip them again. Let's go ahead and move that triangle another 90 degrees. So let's see what we would do to move this triangle now into this other quadrant, which is quadrant number four. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and flip them one more time. So remember, we flipped the numbers. So it's gonna be four comma two, then it's gonna be four comma five, then it's going to be seven comma two. So we flip them and then we add whatever sign quadrant four is supposed to be. So because quadrant four is positive X's, they have positive X's and negative Y's, all of these points have to have positive X's and negative Y's. So it'd be positive four, negative two, then it would be positive four, negative five, then it would be positive seven, negative two. So let's go ahead and go and plot that. So positive four, one, two, three, four, negative two, one, two. So this is gonna be one of our points. And then we're gonna go positive four, negative five. So negative one, two, three, four, five. And then it's gonna be positive seven, negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative two, one, two. So now our triangle is in quadrant four. So again, we flip the numbers, we switch them around, and then we follow the sign for the quadrant that they're in. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. So now we're gonna go ahead and move this triangle 90 degrees, again, clockwise about the axis. So we're gonna start with whatever signs they are now, and these are the current signs, and we're gonna go ahead and flip them. So it's going to be two comma four, then it's gonna be five comma four, then it's gonna be two comma seven, okay? And now that we have the points, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, what do these have to be? So remember, in quadrant three, everything is negative and a negative. So this is going to be negative X's and negative Y's. So the points are gonna be negative two, negative four, negative five, negative four, and negative two, negative seven. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plot these on our graph. So we're gonna go negative two, negative four, one, two, three, four. Then we're gonna do negative five, negative four, one, two, three, four, five, negative four, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go ahead and do negative two, negative seven. So negative two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that we have our three points, we can go ahead and draw our triangle. So now we've seen this triangle go from this quadrant two to quadrant one, to quadrant four, to quadrant three. We learned how to rotate this triangle 90 degrees about the axis. So do you remember what it is that we did? First, we went ahead and we labeled our quadrants. One, two, three, four. Remember, they're counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. Then we went ahead and we wrote the signs that the points are in each quadrant. Then when we go from one quadrant to the next quadrant, we wanna make sure 
that the first thing that we do, the first thing that we do is that we switch the numbers. And then after we switch the numbers, that's when we make the numbers match to the signs, match to the signs that are in that quadrant. I know we did a lot of work here, but we learned a lot of information. And I feel like now when you see these types of problems on your test, you're going to feel more confident to be able to go ahead and get them correct. Please put below any questions that you have. I'm going to try to post another video about this topic because it's definitely not an easy one. And I'm going to post how we can rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise about the axis, about the axis next. Okay, guys, I hope this wasn't too much for you. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. See you next time.